Hi, for today's teardown, not one but two obscure aircraft electronics box from eBay. I found them on German eBay for uh, 15 and 20 euros, something like this. And uh, they were, uh, they came both in the same parcel, quite a big parcel actually. So they are called uh, modulator DF data and converter data. First about the brand, it is ESL. I searched on Google. I found several electronics companies called ESL. One in Austria and one in South Africa, if I remember correctly. But no one seems to be matching perfectly because this stuff is early 70s. All the hardware is imperial, so it is most likely made in the USA but it might also be uh, made in Israel. The first box is called M105, serial number 003. The second one is the CV3320 slash U, also number, serial number 003. So I do not know if it is a coincidence or what, but it is quite rare to have something with serial number 003 and even more rare to have a box of the same design and same manufacturer with the same serial number. So on the front here we have a number of uh, uh, miniature banana connectors for test purpose probably. Then five big uh, military connectors the uh, regular uh, aircraft uh, electronics uh, attachment system and here we have a label say, that says use only in IPF slash MRF I have no idea of what is uh, IPF however MRF might be for multi role fighter but there is just one problem these boxes are enormous because you do not see how deep they are so far. I give you, I will show you it later. Uh, they barely fit on my bench. Here we have a label that says caution calibrated for aircraft number 15883. So quite a large aircraft number. They seem to be more uh, military design than uh, civilian, but I cannot be uh, completely uh, sure about this. I have no uh, enough information. So here is for the front side. I will uh, flip them around to sh show you the back side. So back side has nothing except case screw, uh, locating pins. So yeah, well, holes for uh, locating pins, and here a uh, weird cutout with uh, again serial number 003. So it looks like this uh, case was designed for another device with uh, probably a connector here, and they did reuse the case. It is uh, riveted uh, aluminium uh, sheet that is folded and riveted. You can see quite a weird design. So what you did not see yet is actually how deep these boxes are. They are 50 centimeters deep. Look at this. Quite enormous. Uh, here on the side you have mounting holes and also on the bottom in a weird pattern like this holes, they are both the same uh, the design, the other one is exactly the same quite uh, interesting and unusual ok, now I will uh, put the camera over it, we will uh, pop the cover off and uh, have a look inside ok, so let's do it, the big one first a lot of empty space actually lot of uh, wiring harness and circuit boards, plug-in circuit boards with this terribly bad design on this one. Look at this, the locking levers on the circuit boards will 
pop out as soon you undo the cover and of course when you try to reinstall the cover they will catch and it is a real nightmare to reinstall this cover super bad design here because actually the, these levers do not catch correctly in their rails and do not stay correctly locked in place so because maybe the plastic is old I do not know why but really not impressive work here so we have a number of circuit boards with uh, resistor color code coded test points apparently in this module I am missing three circuit boards because on the card edge connectors at the bottom here I can see uh, evidence of uh, uh, previously installed circuit board that is missing so not sure if they were removed for demilitarization or uh, for repairing another unit but you get the ID a number of circuit boards the other one is exactly the same with less circuit boards as it is a smaller box But you get the idea. So first we will have a look at the box construction by itself. Uh, everywhere on my bench. So they are both the same ID. So you can see the connectors here have uh, these are pinned connectors. So it means you the pin is uh, crimped onto the wire or you need special tools to remove them from the connector hull. And you can see how the uh, black color from the uh, connector core did uh, migrate into the wires here. Quite interesting. And as always, on this kind of connectors, you have a crown here that is never tight, almost. Quite interesting. Uh, you can see the overall construction, just a front piece, side pieces, and the back piece in a folded aluminium. Here we have interesting stuff that uh, is uh, found also in the other unit. So filter assemblies and uh, uh, grounding uh, point that is uh, insulated from not not this one but could be insulated and it is actually a terminal block to connect uh, several wires together. About these filter units. I have the same one in another uh, device, it is the Deca computer. I made a teardown off, I will link in the video description, they are exactly the same model and same brand. Another view here for you on the wire harness. Then uh, you can see all the uh, card edge connectors here. with uh, wires going to them uh, braids here for uh, grounding uh, power bus probably and nothing else particular except uh, the nice uh, wire looms the second box is at the same time similar and different because here they did at least install the latches of the cards in the other way so they will not catch against the cover when you reinstall the cover which is good you have here more of the same devices you can see this interconnects the uh, filter assemblies and a lot less uh, cables in this one because we have only three connectors At the bottom, same stuff, except the uh, screws are installed in the other direction here, you can see. They are uh, mounted from the top, and I did not tie, where is it? Yes, here, it seems they did install a screw that is actually too short, which is quite uh, interesting. And uh, nothing else, just uh, aluminium pieces against, uh, clamped against the two uh, side panels to provide uh, support for the 
card connectors. We can see a little bit of the circuit boards from the holes in the sides, so not sure, yes, it must be for the uh, cooling purpose, these holes to allow uh, airflow. And uh, you can see the circuit boards. Here uh, I have an unpopulated spot, but it, I have no uh, marks of uh, a previously installed circuit board in this one. And here you can see, uh, so we are missing actually the uh, the uh, board ID on the latch. So you do not know uh, where to reinstall your board except for the uh, uh, locking uh, feature at the bottom. They did, uh, there is a piece in the connector that will uh, match with a groove in the card edge connector, but several of them did fall already. So quite a bad design. What else? Yes, here this, uh, look at this. This uh, grounding cable, they did uh, remove too many insulation of, from it and it is almost, it is not far from being able to touch the other contact here. Quite uh, weird, a little bit how you're doing and uh, actually there is other weird stuff on the circuit boards and here they did use a sticky uh, pad for the uh, wire loom and uh, you know that these sticky pads are prone to get unglued. Okay, now I will pop off all the cars and we will have a look at each one of them. So popping them off is quite easy but reinstalling them is a real nightmare because you have to press very hard actually on the card which is sharp to be able to reinsert it in the connector here. <coughs> Like this, it is uh, really difficult. Okay, so we will start with the circuit boards from the small box. Uh, let's start with this uh, one. So you can see the very old school design. Uh, electro cube. Shielded uh, capacitor, Motorola on the Texas Instrument uh, ceramic ICs. This one is a nice uh, gold ceramic, but uh, I do not believe this number will give any information. Seems quite proprietary. Trimmers, test points, and uh, really. Uh, old school circuit tracks as you can see ESL 105 stamp here uh, apparently uh, evidence of a rework on this uh, IC you can see the conformal coating was uh, obviously removed and they did uh, rework the solder so probably it was replaced uh, about the dead codes, I have 72 and 73 everywhere. Even 71 here, so it is uh, older than me, this thing. And this circuit has no uh, information about what it does, no name. So I put it back in place, we we'll go to the next one from the small box. Ah, this one is called Reflection Canceller Defeat CTK Board. Excuse me, Defeat CKT Board. Interesting. Uh, not a lot of stuff on this one. Apparently, they did uh, here uh, write the serial number and cover it with some epoxy for some reason. White uh, EVD gold plated contacts, nothing on the back. So it is a second board, third board. Ah, this one is quite beautiful, always the same stuff. Round uh, ICs here, probably up amps. Proof of rework everywhere. Here you can see. Here, 
Mallory, Capacitors. Apparently, Fairchild. And Texas Instrument. SN54 Series. Ship here. So, nothing particular for, so far. And uh, so this box is the converter data. So, it must convert somehow some data. Next board, more uh, SN54 series, Texas Instrument and Motorola. This time it is called the preset on the data the gate logic. The previous one has nothing here, no, no name. Okay. So preset on data gate logic. Okay. Uh, first bulge wire here, you can see. Interesting. Next one. So this one has a normal and test switch. Push buttons here. Which are actually mounted onto a little uh, board because they did not have a correct uh, model of push button, it seems. Like this one, so they had to put a little board. Interesting. It is called the counter logic slash test. Again, serial number 003 with 003 protected with epoxy. They really do not want. So I want to modify the uh, serial number. Maybe it is because the, it is a transfer letters, or maybe because it did not uh, remain in place. Also here they did this. It was quite interesting. More of your SN54 series. No budge, but a missing conformal coating here in this area, as you can see. Okay. Uh, this one has nothing. It is called the Line Driver Substitute Board. Serial number 002 here. Different serial number. Just tracks. But you can see they did manage to do bodges onto uh, such a simple circuit board. Okay. And uh, we are going with the last one for the small of the two, the small box. It is interface board with one more of this gold ceramic ices and exactly more of the same stuff here. Uh, no bodges, but still not missing a conformal coating. Interesting. Ok, it was your first box, the data converter, now for the uh, modulator DF data. So on this one the cards have numbers, so you do them in the order, but first I did notice here we have onto a masking tape, uh, modified, grown modified onto, into uh, 1973. Serial number 3 by Denton. Hello, Denton. So, I try to pop out the circuit boards. This one is called the data register. Two more gold ICs. Uh, unpopulated uh, ICs, here it seems. Or it is more, maybe, some kind of uh, programming pattern that you could, uh, yes, here also, where you could uh, make uh, some uh, jumper links or vias or the interconnect tracks to uh, program something or configure something. Here they did actually do it. Look at this. They did install vias in uh, some of the holds. So quite interesting. Uh, first, uh, Bulge wires, as you can see. 
with uh, some they did glue apparently them with some uh, silicone and for this purpose they had to remove the conformal coating because maybe it was not sticking correctly onto the conformal coating quite uh, interesting ok next board so I do not know what I will do with this stuff given it is missing uh, circuit boards and uh, it has been uh, modified also uh, I'm not sure if I will keep them or uh, maybe just keep the best circuit boards and scrap the boxes but they are quite rare with serial number 003 so I have to decide something here this one is called the second sir a lot more ICs with uh, nice uh, apparently decoupling capacitors here no bodges but also uh, repair work here apparently ok next board this one is clock and surely enough we have a quartz crystal oscillator here uh, weird item here probably just a transistor but oh no it must be another oscillator actually it is written 1 MHz in a weird uh, free pin transistor like package adjustable uh, golden adjustable capacitor here for trimming the frequency and more of your MC54 series ICs that code of 71 and 72 no bulge or no uh, marks of repair on this board except maybe here they did something about the edge, card edge connector as you can see quite weird ah. next board is the clock control of course you need to control your clock ah here you can see the name of the circuit uh, the PCB manufacturer actually the fiberglass manufacturer ok then we are starting to have more interesting boards <coughs> here uh, no uh, information about what the board is but you can see uh, bigger uh, integrated circuits Fairchild 931151 and more of this uh, programming uh, patterns you can uh, make vias inside them to program something a big uh, capacitor on the power uh, bus apparently for power decoupling testing so I could figure out the pin out of this and power the board but obviously there will not much be a lot to see interesting uh, next board and we will have finished the first row of three in the big box so more or less the same parts same big IC board wires always the same capacitor at the corner and no information about what it is but this one has a pretty high serial number of 209 ok we did on the first row we continue with the second one uh, gate generator here is what looks like your gate generator continue with board number 10 excuse me mm. 
So this one was actually super hard to undo. It is the status register. Ah, bulk wires. Okay. A lot of them here. Wow, this one was really not easy. Well, actually, it is board number 10, but I did totally forgot about board number 8, which is coded. It is your analog multiplexer. You can see 8 or 9 similar uh, stages with trimmers each time. Big golden ceramic IC with a weird package here. That's something you see every day. Bulged resistor here. Some weird test points here with uh, wires going at the other side because the other side actually has a wire loom of bulges. Look at this. Quite impressive. And here also, it looks like they did add the resistors. Yes, they did actually cut the tracks and add resistors. So, heavily modified board here. Quite impressive. And the pin to the lock of the card is actually off. Okay, so this one is interesting. A number of trimmers. Uh, it was board number 8. I did install board number nine, 7 and the slot number 9, which is unpopulated. And we go to board number 11, if I can. Pull it off. And it is again the same stuff with no information about what it does. This one, okay. The board number 12 is exactly looking similar, so I'm not bother removing it. Board number 13, if I can pop it out, excuse me. Again, this one was super hard to undo and has no uh, name, but more uh, ball wires. Nice uh, setup here around uh, probably uh, operational amplifier. Look at this, quite interesting a pattern of uh, resistors. Here also. And they did apparently, yes, rework also this. Uh, I do not know what product you can use to remove a conformal coating like this. But they had to do it obviously to replace the IC here. Okay, and also looks like here they did probably replace the. Oh, it is well because you are missing the conformal coating on this side, but not on the other side. Really, really weird stuff. Board number 14. Called the audio amplifier. More of your, uh, the same kind of golden ceramic ices. Big resistors here, old school resistors. A lot of trimmers for just uh, audio amplifier. Thing. We are left with uh, two last boards. Luckily, enough. Uh, auxiliary circuits with unpopulated optional uh, ICs here, as you can see, with both wires and one replaced AC here. 
So really, it is a lot of uh, IC replacement. So did they uh, burn out, or uh, maybe it is when upgrading the box they did uh, replace for other ICs with better performance? Quite uh, weird, but it is a lot of uh, IC replacement. So auxiliary circuits. MC54 series. I'm sure some viewer will comment about all what the, these ICs do. And we finish with the convolutional encoder, whatever that means. Very light conformal coating on this one. Testingly enough. Nice gold ceramic IC here. This one is beautiful. And always the same things. Uh, here we have ITT branded ICs. And this one has the uh, information the other way around. It is not uh, always you see it. Quite interesting. Okay. So we are done. Now I have to reinstall all the boards back in their slot because they are actually super hard to remove and super hard to reinstall. You have to push on them pretty hard. Like this. It was out of the frame. I will take this one in order to have the, the hook here on the latch to uh, catch on in the matching hole here. So really hard to do. As you can see, a lot of effort needed and not maintenance friendly for sure. Okay, so I will reinstall the cars, but actually, I do not know what I will do with these things. Some nice uh, ICs and some uh, rubbers, but uh, they are bulky, they are rare, but uh, one more time. Uh, hard to uh, take a decision about what to do with the stuff. Uh, I cannot uh, salvage the connectors very much because they are crimped. Unless if I keep the wire looms with them. The boards are uh, all bulged and not very beautiful except for the golden ices. Not sure. And I do not do uh, gold refining, uh, if you wonder. Okay, at least there is a lot of imperial hardware to retrieve. Imperial screws, it is always good. But I believe I will keep the boxes if I find somewhere to put them in storage. So, thanks for watching. Bye bye.